Hello everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to discuss the last part of the different types of files that AVL needs for running an analysis, and that includes the AVL run file. So we will be discussing the AVL run files in this tutorial. So we will be discussing how to create a run file, the format and syntax for the run file, how to read and write or save the run files, and how to switch between the run cases. So when you start a run file, they usually start with a series of dashes to separate the different run cases. After this separator line, you will get a header with the name. So it starts with a run space case, double space, a number. Remember that if this number doesn't change, and if you add multiple of these, you will not have multiple run cases. So if you add multiple of these by copy paste in a run file, and all of them have run case one, you will only have one run case read in the AVL. And after the colon, you have this name here that is in red now, but it can be any name. The name is useful if you want to separate the files or the run cases that you are going to import into your analysis to know exactly based on the name what kind of conditions you're going to use or are to be used for your analysis. The next portion is going to be the flight constraints. So on the left hand side, you see some parameters that you can set a value for. And on the right hand side, you see some parameters that you want to be constrained. So in this case, you see that the first option or the first line is saying that I want an alpha that is going to give me the angle of attack or alpha of four degrees. You could set the alpha or the angle of attack to give you the lift coefficient or CL to be, for example, 0 0.2. So on the left hand side, you have what you want to set a constraint. And on the right hand side, you want you set the constraint that the left hand side parameter is going to impose. Remember that not all of these can be achieved based on how you set up the geometry file and the mass file. Particularly, if you do not have any control surfaces in your geometry file, the use of any of these control surfaces or setting them as constraints for this run file or run case is going to be meaningless because they do not exist in your geometry file and the program cannot use them to impose certain constraints. Next, we have the flight conditions. So in the flight conditions, you can set what kind of conditions or parameters you want to use for the flight you're going to test your aircraft for. For example, what will be the angle of attack or the bank angle? or the lift coefficient or CD naught or profile drag, the bank angle, elevation, heading. So this will be, for example, roll, pitch, yaw, the Mach number for the speed of the aircraft or the velocity, either or, you can set it. And the density, the gravitational acceleration, Note that here you also have the units, so the gravitational acceleration is 32 feet per second squared, whereas if it was the standard unit, it will be 9.81 on planet Earth. And you also have the turn radius and the load factor, and these parameters are more useful if you are setting up the analysis for a run case, whether it's a trim condition or a bank or coordinated turn. Next, you have mass and inertia. If you remember, we worked on the mass file prior to this. And in the mass file, we were able to distribute the mass using the point masses and get a distribution of the mass, which will give us the 
center of mass and other inertia matrices elements. However, if you do not have the mass file you, and you're able through any other sort of calculation or analysis, find the values for the mass distribution and inertia, you can input the values here manually. If you do have the mass file and these information or these elements exist in your run case, then it is better to update them from the mass file that you have imported. And we will look at how you can do that when we go to the examples using the AVL. But if you do not update this, when you import your mass file, there probably is going to be issues or inaccuracies when you're running your analysis. So either make sure that you do not include these in your run case, or if you do, they are the one that they should be based on the mass file that you have set up. If not, load the mass file and then import or override this information for the run case from the mass file. And lastly, you have some boundary layer information or parameters that if you see they start with visc for viscous and they will be useful for considering the boundary layer properties and boundary layer analysis and simulations. So when they're set here as zero, they will be either defaulted to what the program is set up to or ignored. So these blocks of information are all included in a run file or a case. And all of these will be below one another. So all these blocks will be below one another and we will see how that looks in a run case file. There are some important things to remember. First is this constraint part that we talked about or the constraints block is available to you through the operation menu as well. So you can change any of these in the operation menu that we will look at in the AVL itself. The other blocks simply list all the current parameter values. That is, if this run case was not converged before the run case file was written, the operating parameter values may not correspond to the specified constraints. For example, the top constraint that we saw in the example says, I want an alpha for four degrees, which indicates that alpha is to be driven to four degrees. And we additionally saw there was another line that says alpha equals 2.31 degrees which is not up to date. We also had a line that said, I want the CL to be 0.31. And this probably is also not up to date. These parameters that are stale may or may not have consequences in your analysis. So a stale alpha or CL value doesn't matter since the run case will always be converged before it's used for plotting, listing outputs, or eigenmode analysis. In any case, just to be sure that all these stale parameters are taken care of or ignored, you can issue or run the xx command in the operation menu before saving the run case file to ensure that the alpha and CL are up to date. So this basically will update the alpha and CL from the execution of the analysis or the run case file that you have through the geometry file, the mass file, and the run cases. And to make sure that the simulation has converged and the analysis has a solution. If there is no solution, the parameters that you've put in together for geometry, mass, and run cases do not give you a reasonable answer. There is no solution and they cannot exist. 
The dimensional parameter values related to the aircraft mass, that is the parameter in the blue box on this right-hand side, may also be still. So as we said, if you do have a mass file, these need to be updated based on the mass file you import. You can do this using the mset command that we will look at in the demonstration. And finally, the velocity, turn radius, and the load factor data can also depend on the mass file as well as the lift coefficient, CL. So we need to be updating if the mass file is changed. So whenever you change the mass file, these need to be updated as well. And you can do that manually if you know the values, or if you don't, you can use the C1 or C2 trim menus in the operation menu to set these values automatically using the other files that you've imported, including the geometry, mass, and run cases. So this is a brief overview of what the run case is. In reality, you may not need to load a run file to your analysis, and you can set all of these values either from other values, other files including your geometry and mass file, or manually by setting the conditions that you're setting up for your analysis. However, if you have multiple conditions, saving those conditions into these run cases will save you a lot of time as you go through multiple analyses, especially if you're in the preliminary design or conceptual design stage of your analyses. And you're going to have to change a lot of these parameters, especially for geometry and mass file, and then rerun the analyses to make sure that the requirement that was set for you or for your design is met. Now let's go to our console and see how this looks. So I have this console open and I'm going to go to Geometry Designer. And I'm going to load a run case file template. So as you see, the run case file starts with run case one with a run name. The auto spacing in this auto console, the error console, is useful for the geometry file and mass file, but it may be a little bit distracting when you're working with the run case files. So if you were at any point disturbed or distracted by the spacing in this editor, you can go and turn off the auto spacing in the options here, on and off, and it will help you, whichever works better for you, to auto space or not to auto space. So I'm gonna keep this on for now, but we can remove it at any point. Also, because there's no preview for the run cases, I'm going to show editor only, so we only see the information that we need to see. So as you see, we have a run case, run case one, and we can give it a name. So I can say run one. It has the constraints block. It has the flight conditions block, the mass properties, and the viscous properties or the boundary layer properties. As you can see, the units here are in standard units, so they are not imperial or English units. And this is a blank template, so all values are set to zero. If you wanted to change these values, you can change them if you know them from somewhere else, whether it's from the requirements you're given, or for example, for the mass file, you're given the mass distribution, you have them from your mass analyses, and the only thing that doesn't have a zero value here is the gravitational acceleration, which is set to 9.81 in a standard unit. Now, if I were to add a second run case, I can simply select all of this, Control C to copy it, and then move my cursor here and Control V to paste it. And if you see the copy has a still number one, I must change this 
to the next number. So if I add another one, I have to change that to 3 to make sure I have 3 cases. And I can keep the names or change the names. I can have run 2 and I can have run 3. And I can change the properties as I wish. And then I can load these properties into the AVL. Now, I have already prepared a sample for the geometry file and the math file that we have been working on. So I'm going to load the test.run that I have already saved. And you can see that I have set one case for cruise and one case for bank. And in this case, I have already imported the information for mass from the mass file that we created in the previous tutorials. But what we are going to do next is we're going to try and change the properties, load them run cases and see if we can change these properties there and what else we can do. A note here is you see sometimes that you have the numbers shown in scientific expression. So you have e to the power of negative 2 to save space. Sometimes when you do this, the space between the unit and the number may be removed. And if these two are attached, AVL may have problem reading the file. So if you see there's an error message reading your run cases, make sure to come here and double check that there is a space, a minimum of one space, between the numbers you have and the units that you have so that the AVL can separate the numbers from the units when it's reading and analyzing the data. So now that we have this test that run, what we are going to do is we are going to go back to the AVL error console and I'm in the first menu. What I'm going to do first is to load a run case, we need to put case and the name of the file, which in this case is in the same directory. Otherwise, you have to put the absolute path to that file. So I'm going to put case and I'm going to put test.run, which is the one we were looking at with two cases. What you see is happening is that it reads the cases cruise and banking that we had in our run case, but it's giving us a lot of ignoring messages. The reason it's ignoring all of these is because we have not yet loaded a geometry or a mass file into the program. Because of that, a lot of the constraints that we were to set are ignored because nothing exists for the AVL to impose those constraints. So what we need to do in this case is we need to first load the geometry file. So we're going to load test. We also need to load the mass file. And now if we load the test file, it is not giving us the ignore warnings anymore and it's loading or reading the cases as we have in our run case. Now, after I load my geometry file, my mass file and my run files or run cases, I can enter the geometry menu. And in the, in the operation menu, when I enter the operation menu, we can see the variables and the constraints are shown to us directly. This is the upper block of the run case that we discussed, the variables and the constraints. Additionally, we have C1 and C2 for the level or banked horizontal flight constraints or a steady pitch rate looping flight constraint, which are more advanced conditions or flight constraints you can set up. Additionally, you can use the M 
to modify these parameters or the flight condition parameters that we discussed, for example, the velocity, the Mach number, and things like that. Now, remember that we said, also, before we get to the masses, you see that when I enter the run case, enter the operation menu, it is saying that operation of run case one out of two. So it says dot upper case one of two. If I want to go to case two instead of case one, I can just type two, and now case is changing to two. If I switch back to one, it's going to switch back to one, and this means which execution is going to be run when or which case is being used to run or execute a simulation or a run case when you are dealing with the operation menu or when you are in the operation menu. So pay attention to this case, which one out of which one. And for the naming of them, refer to the run cases that you loaded earlier. For example, we had case one cruise and case two banking. Now, if you wanted to double check the information for our parameters, or we can put M and it will show us all the other parameters that are in the run cases. So here we see we have the mass of 65 kilograms with I, X, Y, and Z values corresponding to the mass file that we loaded. So these are the values that we loaded in our mass file with the mass of 65 kilogram and the center of gravity with this coordinates. If we had in initially imported a run case from the template file that had these set to zero, we would have to change these values or update them from the mass file we loaded. How could we do that? We need to go back to the operation menu and in the operation menu, if we go to the very top, there is a command mset. So what mset does, it's, it's going to apply the mass file data to the stored run cases. You can choose a specific case or you can apply it to all run cases that you have loaded. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type mset. So it's asking me, enter the index of the target run case. If I put zero, it will apply to all run cases. If I put minus one, it will abort this. Or if I put any run case numbers, it will apply specifically to that run case. In my case, I have two. So I can put one or two just to apply it to case one or two respectively. I want to apply it to all cases. So I'm going to put zero, which by default is there and it does apply it. So now, if I go to the operation menu again, and I see I'm in case one, I press M, the information is updated from the mass file. So I have the updated information from my mass file. Now, the other thing you want to do to make sure that everything is now updated and saved, you want to save the run case. So to save the run case, you can use S. Sorry, we're in the parameters menu, so I'm going to exit this with an enter. Then I'm going to press S, enter, and it's asking me the run case file. So I put the test.run, which we loaded, and it's asking me, do you want to override it because it already exists? And I want to override this, so I put Y yes and press enter. Now, I can run or execute the run case using the X command. And when I do, you see that it is running some analysis, going through some iterations, and it said that it cannot trim this condition because the alpha is too large, it's almost going to 80 degrees, at which the aircraft would most definitely stall. So when you see this and you realize that you cannot trim this aircraft at this condition, this is the time to go back, check your flight conditions, 
check the geometry, check the mass file, and see what could be the cause of this. And you can come back, rerun these exercises to load the geometry, the mass file, and the run cases. And you can continue this process to make sure that the design that you have is meeting your criteria, it can be trimmed, and your simulation or analysis is converging. Now to show an example of a converging case, I'm going to restart the console and I'm going to load the example that comes with the package for AVL that has multiple examples that we can run. In this one, we're going to run the BD example. So I'm going to load BD Then I'm going to load the mass file for BD and I will load the BD run cases. So you see that the run cases for this unit are seven run cases. Now if I enter the operation menu for this aircraft, I can see the geometry of this aircraft using the G command. So this is how it is designed. It does have a tail, horizontal, vertical tail. It is the wing and it also has simulation for the fuselage of this aircraft. Additionally, I can run an execution. Remember that we are now in case one. Executing this was successful. First I have to exit the plotting menu or the geometry menu. Then I'm going to execute. Now after execution, because the simulation has converged after a couple of iterations, I see the results from that here. So I see the outcomes of the simulation for this aircraft with this mass and run case. And this is just to showcase the ability to run proper execution for analysis if everything works out, the geometry, the mass, and the run cases. And if they don't, you have to go back, recheck what is causing the issue, change your run cases, your geometry configuration, and your mass file to get a convergible simulation or analysis.